Good day, listeners and viewers, and welcome to this edition of the Pure Sex Radio program. I'm glad to have you here with us. Uh, my name is Jonathan, and I got my buddy Stephen Cervantes here. Yes, so. glad to How be here. Doing? Good. Exciting. I love to go to Gateway because these guys always say, hey, I feel like I know you. I've heard you a bunch of times on your podcast. That's always a blessing. So if you've said that to me, thank you. Yeah. It's just fun to get feedback from folks. And uh, we thank you. Lots of you give us feedback and it helps us. Yeah. So we're um, we're recording this in, in July of 2020, which at least in, mm. in my lifetime is kind of going down as the weirdest year ever. <laughs> I mean, if you think about it, it's just it's it's like multiple roller coasters with unknown twists and turns. And obviously, the the biggest thing that's happened is just the the COVID-19, the, the coronavirus pandemic. And uh, we actually wanted to just take a broadcast to kind of take a deep breath yeah. um, and maybe even just have you observe us sort of processing all of this COVID stuff, like what is, it, how has it affected our lives and, yes. and how are we processing that? So how would you describe kind of what we're going to be doing right. in this program? Yeah. Um, I, I, I like to peek into other people's lives and say, how are you doing? And mm. what are you experiencing? And how are you coping? And do you have any good ideas that are working? Um, so, and there are people talking about it, how difficult it is. And, and, you know, it's a time for lots of different feelings. We're going through change. Uh, we're going through stress and difficulty. There's, there's time to grieve in this process. Anyway, I challenged Jonathan. I said, okay, Jonathan, write some things down because I've been thinking as I was coming over, what, what would I say about COVID and what are my observations? Mm -hmm. And maybe they'll be helpful to you. Um, we, we like to look inside ourselves. The, the, the more we know ourselves, the more we know what to talk to God about. Um, so we hope this is just an invitation for you to look inside you as we sort of peek inside ourselves and we let you in. You know, transparency is, is, is uh, critical for intimacy and connection. Mm -hmm. You want to be heady with all the answers? Fine. Yeah. You want to be smart and tell everybody what to do? Fine. But this is life, and nobody knows what they're doing. This is really difficult. I tell everybody, I've never been this age before. I'm faking it the best I can. <laughs> now, I could be a, 20 years younger, and I could make great choices because I knew the future, and I knew what was smart. And But it's like at this it's like age, you'd, at you'd this make time, a great 40-year-old the same yeah. way I'd make a great 20-year-old. There you, you know go. I mean? You like... got it. If we could go back, but the truth is you can't. Right. So. So anyway, I, I here's my first comment. We're just gonna I'm gonna say things. Jonathan's gonna say mm -hmm. things, and we hope we invite you to have thoughts and that you can spawn dialogues with others and talk to the father about what's going on. Talk to your spouse, and we bring things to the light. We're freer, you know. That's what we're after here. So I was I went to my office to pick up the mail, and there's a guy in my office that has never left. Now, everybody else is gone. Big office, bunch of people. They're all gone. Nobody's there. No secretary, nothing. So I walk in. He's there. And he says to me, I've been in this office for 16 weeks alone. Mm. And I thought to myself, have I been out of the office for 16 <laughs> weeks? <laughs> Haven't gone back in, doing everything, video and Zooming like everybody else, trying to, to stay safe, avoid the corona. And... Um, 16 weeks mm -hmm. of your routine changing, of your it's life It's like almost changing. one third of a year, you know, if you think about that. That's almost a third of a year. That that I went home, I knew this was coming, I was watching it, and they said, oh, everybody's, you know, you got a shelter in place. I thought, we're going to go home for maybe a month, maybe two months, and we'll be back. Well, mm -hmm. we're way past that. And so just that, it's like makes my mind go, what? 16 yeah. weeks of, of breaking your old routine? Well, and I think to, to piggyback what you were saying earlier about what this, this particular program is about, I, I want the listeners to understand, you know, this isn't a program really where we're providing you with any answers. <laughs> uh, I mean, and that's kind of on purpose because yeah. we're saying we want, you to, we want you to ask yourself the same questions we're asking ourselves. Like, what does it look like to, to process unexpected, difficult seasons of life? Because the reality is, if, if you can, well, I guess this is an ironic way to put it, if there's one thing you can expect in life, 
it's unexpected difficult seasons in life. Oh, wow. You're going to have things that happen in your relationships, in your body, right. in your career, in your you know home that are just, you can't predict them. And I think everybody is now realizing, man, how do I actually respond to difficult moments that I couldn't keep, I couldn't see coming? And one of the things that first came to my mind when you, when you came in today and said, hey, let's talk about COVID, you know, how's it affected you? The very first word that came into my mind was cancel. Oh. Like COVID has canceled everything. <laughs> like oh. it, it canceled my kid's school. It canceled my wife's job because she's a teacher. It canceled a lot of even some of the live stuff we've done in ministry. My speaking schedule calendar is completely blank right now. And that's never happened in 17 years of, oh, wow. of ministry, at least live speaking. You know what right, I mean? It's, just, right. it's weird. It's like everything got canceled. Yeah. And I guess I started realizing how much I'm used to that rhythm of being engaged in that way. I'm used to my kids being in school. I'm used to, you know, having a pretty rhythmic travel schedule for speaking and those kind of things. And then just like everything in a single move just got Canceled. wiped out. Yeah. <laughs> you know what you were saying? Unexpected things will happen in life. That's true. But there are no experts on this. Mm -hmm. nobody has been through this right so if your house burns down you're in a wreck you get sick somebody moves you lose your job everybody's got some stories about that but nobody has ever done a pandemic mm -hmm. i mean we haven't done I, I you know maybe in 1916 or something but nobody i know you know my mother's 88 she's never been through a pandemic nobody alive that i know and so yeah. it's hard to find expertise and and I often think we live by templates. You know, how, how are you at a wedding? You know, you're probably the same way. You get excited or you hate them every time, you know. Or at a funeral, you know, you're sad or you're stiff and cold. Let's get through it. Well, you know, well, we don't have any templates. We don't have any templates for this. And so mm -hmm. that's difficult. One of the other things that I thought of was, uh, so we live we live here in Texas. And, uh, you know, we, we had the first couple months, I'd say, of, of sort of when the quarantine started happening here in Texas, I felt a sense of um, uh, evenness, even if even as everything was getting canceled. I, I felt like, you know what, I, I, there's some emotional reserves that I've got here. I don't feel this sense mm. of panic. I don't feel this sense of, of you know, uh, crisis in, in terms of how it's affected uh, my personal life. But then as we had these spikes that started coming back up in June mm -hmm. and things started getting restricted again, yeah. I felt I, I was immediately made aware that there's a limit to emotional reserves. <laughs> oh, oh. Like what I, I don't have as much capacity mm. now as I did four months ago. And I think I, I started realizing the longer you stay in a particular circumstance, and maybe if yeah. if you're only relying on what you've got in reserve emotionally, yeah. there's a point at which that circumstance can sort of drain Well, it's those like reserves. surviving, right? I yeah. can survive uh, four weeks. I can survive eight weeks, right? I could survive. And then they say, well, there's more. It's It's getting worse. There's more to come. Mm -hmm. Right, you're seeing it. So I feel like that second wave, or whatever you want to call it, yeah. hit me way harder. Mm. And I've even felt somewhat of a depressed state, you know, and just kind of like, oh heavy. man, it, it feels heavier this go around than it did four months ago. Mm. So and I think that's important to realize again when we're talking about these difficult seasons of life that you can be in. Yeah. We're never given, you know, you talk about templates, right? You're never given the time frame on the front end of what some of these seasons and circumstances can look like, right? right? And so sometimes we create certain expectations of, I mean, I think about it in the couple who, you know, a wife discovers her husband's porn issue and then they start seeing counseling or whatever, and they start creating some of these expectations like, well, you know, okay, so six months, things should be better, right? right. And if they hit that six month mark with that expectation of like, hey, things should be better and they're not, they're, they're still limping along and still struggling that moment can feel even heavier sometimes than the initial discovery yeah, of what's going that's on. that's good. So one of my observations is we live in a big world with lots of stuff to explore and see and do, 
And yet right now we're called to live in a very small world. Mm -hmm. Stay home, shelter in place, we're told, right? Don't go out in public places to exchange, you know, sneezes and coughs and droplets. And so, so now you're forced to live in, in, in your home and in your yard and in a much smaller place. And how well do you do mm -hmm. at living in a smaller world and, and finding sort of contentment and peace? I put up hummingbird feeders. My wife and I are looking for hummingbirds, and we've had a few show up in yeah. the middle of summer. You know, they go, they don't, they're seasonal. But I, I know there's some always living around that didn't make the migration. Yeah. And they're thirsty. And the stragglers, leave. huh? Yeah. <laughs> but it's a smaller world. Yeah. Where you got to find interesting things and joy and life and creativity and energy. And, you know, I, I think uh, for some of us who are more introverted, Hey, there's part about part of that smaller world that is kind of exciting. Like I go, hey, you know what? I I I can I like the the world of my lazy boy, mm, you know. And I like yeah. I like I recharge in solitude and that kind of stuff. But I'm also realizing that I mean, one of the things I wrote down here was there can even be a limit to that to where what might initially for let's say an introvert feel like solitude and rest and all of that. Can can easily then turn into boredom, mm. and I've realized that for for me personally, there's there's two different avenues that such boredom can take, and one is I I go into a vegetative state, <laughs> and shut like down, and just, just I just become immobile, completely, just almost you know catatonic, and then but there's another thing, another direction that I can go is. That sometimes the fact that now I've got all I've got more space and more margin to to not have planned, it can turn into creativity. Mm -hmm. Like I built a table and did some of these other kinds of projects where yeah. I realize I have a choice then in that smaller world yes. of what am I going to do in with the limitations that I'm inside of now. And it can it can go it can go several different ways. You that, know, oh, that's really good because I have noticed my motivation at first i was home and i was excited and i was going to file everything that was out of place and organize it man i was so excited for the change and the longer the change holds the slower i'm moving mm -hmm. i don't have quite the same new fresh it's full of possibility so i have to be careful because it's easy to find my lazy boy and go sit there and say well i'm just going to think here rest here right. a few minutes and move slower and and on a really serious note i think what we're realizing you know 4 plus months into this is the very real danger that sometimes that small world can create when there's uh depression right. and the increase of suicidal ideation and when you've maybe already, maybe it's already, it's already an abusive environment and now it's been restricted to yeah. where, so I think. Don't be getting too heavy on this here. Well, I just think know, sometimes uh, there, we realize sometimes when that world gets smaller. Um, it's intensified. It Problems intensifies whatever's within that That's true. environment. But I love what you said about creativity and building. You said a shelf, is that what you said? I built a, I built a table. A table. Yeah. So I, I so I'm I'm looking around my my home and yard and I realize my old fence is drying out. You know, it's time to put stain on it again. And it's like, oh good. Now I'm gonna do my regular work, but when I'm bored, I have a gallon of paint and I'll just I'll just go up and down on these boards and make them come alive again. Now I haven't painted a fence in a long time. It's really stain on dry wood is what it is. But my dad used to put us to work all the time. Yeah. You know, he'd always find somebody that needed help. Go clean their garage or go paint their fence or go help them with this project. He was always farming his boys out. And so, so, and it's just reminding me how peaceful it was to paint a fence. You make progress, you improve something. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a skill I haven't done in a while. It takes me back to childhood. I mean, we can really, use our creativity for some refreshment too in this time. yeah and you know what i want to share something about that too because 
uh, it, you saying that just made me think of a project that my wife and my girls decided to do because, hey, since spring break, all the kids have been home from, from college and school and everything. And so uh, I think it was during April, they they took to tackling our attic space, uh, which is a fully enclosed room and everything. But it's usually where just, you know, stuff gets tossed. Well, it's also where all of our historical things are like all the stuff from my childhood and from Elaine's mm-hmm. childhood and all these kind of things. So what the girls did is not only did they just clean up the attic, but with all of their creativity, they went through all of these this old memorabilia and all this mm-hmm. old stuff, even from their own childhood. And all of the walls in our attic now are decorated almost in themes, like that's Jonathan's corner and that's, that's mom's <laughs> corner. And, that's, and so now you go up there and it's like, a place that you used to like to just keep the light off and not ever want to venture into. Now you can go into and almost just kind of stand there and just soak it all in. Like my, our whole family history now is just kind of residing in that one room. That's good. So that's a way of using like, okay, we're limited here. We can't yeah. go out and do something. What can we be creative about and what can we do? So so I have to throw this in. My brother has an alley behind his place full of rocks. I mean, large rocks. So he's been taking the rocks and building a little wall for a cactus garden. Hmm. He said, I'm here. What are my resources? And so I go over there and watch him and move a rock around. And it's just like live small, but live well. That's the challenge. Mm, that's good, yeah. So I've noticed myself like wanting to talk to old friends. I have a mm-hmm. friend that I haven't spoken to in a long time. And so... I call him up and he and I go and we're an hour later, you know, we've been reminiscing and talking about when we were and back in the day, we worked in summer camp together, you know, and and how he's doing and what he's doing these days. And so it's a good time to connect. Yeah, and that's what that's where I feel like on the on the first wave um, that's what I used a lot of that emotional reserve energy for as I realized mm. Uh, I, I, I realized several things. One is, hey, here is an opportunity to rather than just pull inward to actually reach out and see how my buddies are doing, like people from high school and college and, yeah. and all of that. And so it was really a rich time of being able to just kind of make some connections. But the other thing I realized is, I, is, is what I said earlier. I know that this is also going to be a much harder time for some people out yes. there in my life. And so I try to use that time also to say, you know what, how can I be praying for the folks mm. that are in my life or are connected to me in some way who just feel I need I need a lifeline I need some kind of so I spent some of that time also just trying to to pray with others during the time too because you find out who cares right right who do you care about that you want to check on and who cares about you yeah that's good and so it's like I appreciate that because it's like you sort of figure out who your friends really are. Well, and it's interesting because, you know, you use that term before your world gets smaller. Uh, but I think sometimes we need, maybe even in the good times, to say, who really lives with me in this smaller world? Mm. When when everything around is falling apart, who who are my closest right. friends and loved ones? And, right. and I think it's good to be reminded that that it, it's it's okay to only have a few that are sort of in that inner circle of your small world. So my next category is we're, we're really finding out what matters, right? It's like the wheat and the chaff, right? There's a separating out of mm-hmm. what's really important. We were doing a lot of busy things. We are running to a lot of places. And, you know, and I was reading this, this piece where the author said, we're so much busier, but we're not much happier. Mm. Everybody's distracted and filling themselves up and going. But do, but do you think people are happier? No, they have more to complain about, right? Yeah, I think that's a good way to think of it. It's like we're busier, but not fuller. Like our lives are not fuller. Um, it's kind of like the difference between, you know, spending all of your time eating candy <laughs> or having just a few really good healthy meals, you know. Um, but one of the things that I thought of, I was just talking to a guy the other day 
who is on the leadership council of his church. And he said, you know, one of the things that they have been realizing and seeing actually as a positive is he said, you know, if you think about it, we've just gone through a time where every ball that we had in the air is now on the ground. Now we can choose which ones to pick up. Uh, that's good. Because some of them may just need to stay down. Right. You know what I mean? Like right. what is really essential that we need to pick back up? And I thought about that too. I realized for me, I felt a kind of even a personal challenge for my faith during the season because I realized, you know what? I I may have not been as accurate in my self-analysis of my faith in terms of where I really am finding my sense of peace and hope mm. and joy. In other words, it sort of exposed maybe some of those areas where I thought, no, no, absolutely, Jesus is where I find my joy. And then I realized, well, maybe I found my joy in traveling. Maybe I found my joy in, you know, fill in the blank with speaking, these, sure, these other things. It's like those may be good things, but they they don't have any they don't have any staying power or permanence in my life as as is being demonstrated right now. So it's kind of right. ca- caused me to recalibrate and go, okay, can I really now get my roots deep into my faith in Christ and recognize mm. that no matter what's happening around me, I can actually still have peace, hope and joy. Yes, 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 yes. And that's the stuff that matters, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. How do we still live life in a smaller world? closer to home and yet be full yeah right of faith of hope of rest of promise of vision and you know one other thing that i think this has really um challenged me on in a good way is i've realized that you know for a lot of my ministry life anyway um i'm offering people lots of answers Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, when you've when you've lived certain things and you've right. experienced certain things, you have something of that to offer. What I think this has really been teaching me over the last four months is is helping me to listen really well, because almost like deeper or longer listening deeper. Or... Because I think initially I was realizing. I mean, I was having a lot of the you know normal reactions that the red blooded American Texan. <laughs> yeah, has yeah. whenever any restrictions are put on them, right? <laughs> Texans are a very independent people. So the idea was there's always kind of pushback on any kind of, yeah. you know, limitations. And I think I had the normal initial reaction that way too until I really started listening. Listening to and not listening to news. That'll just make your head explode. But listening to people. Listening to my friends in the medical field, listening to mm. people who are actually of that category of of uh, higher immunodeficiency type, you know, systems, and and just realizing what does it look like for me to hold the tension between the freedoms that we are offered by our constitutions, and yet the mandate by Jesus to love my neighbor as myself. Mm. And so, you know, to give you one example. Wearing a mask. Mm-hmm. Oh man, it'd be easy for me to just rail and and be about liberty and and I've got rights and all this. But then, if I'm going to represent Christ well to my neighbor, I think it's better that I wear a mask. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because it's like tech center Jesus. <laughs> well, I'm not I'm not making it a distinct either or. I'm just saying there's a tension there sometimes, yeah, no, and I think that's, that's what right. that's what COVID has revealed to me in this season of like. I think when we start to listen well, we don't um, we don't hold such hard lines that don't matter as much anymore. Oh, that's good. We start to find this this middle space where we can we can kind of be in a tense position, but we're seeking to really serve and, and love our neighbors well. So no church. Yeah, that's this been... is so unusual a season. Well, no gathering. <laughs> no, yeah, no, no church gatherings, no church attendance, no driving yeah. to church, no church. Um, that's been so unusual. Mm-hmm. I've done that so many years of my life, and then to be told, nope, you don't do that. You don't do that anymore. And we're not sure when we're going to do it again. And they've tried it, and then they stopped again because of mm-hmm. the spike. And... Um, And so I heard an author say, there are people that may not come back. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and there are people that don't want to come back to sit in a pew and be talked to the whole time. Because you can go online and have somebody talk to you. Right. So that some churches are rethinking what is our function and how do we interact differently. And that's part of this idea of like, hey, okay, all the balls have been dropped, right? What needs to be picked back up? And I think one of the things that I've that I've realized during this is that we need to be reminded that the church is not the gathering, it's not the building. Right. It's the people. Now, there is a there is a mandate from scripture that we are to meet together. Mm-hmm. So the 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 Lone Ranger Christian out there that says I don't need to be right. plugged into community. It's like you're not you're not living the Christian life, you know. But the format of what that may look like moving forward yeah. could be very different. And I think that's where again it it exposes where we might have been saying what we think our faith really is or what it means to really be part of a church. Does it mean that I am sitting in that pew right. being preached at? Or is it or can community structures look different? And, yeah, and, and can we be fluid with that? You and that's know? what this speaker was talking about: was people want to interact; they don't want to sit and be preached to. They now they know they can get that online, right? So, what can the church do in terms of networking, connecting, training, interacting people together, so they come for a big, you know, a big interaction session, not just talk to me and you know. yeah, real community. Yeah. So the the last thought I had was that we're not driving as much, and so we're actually living a little cheaper, mm-hmm. you know, because we're staying closer and we're not going. And then that's an observation I made. I'm doing my cars in the garage. There are days it never comes out of the garage. Yeah. You know? and I'm not well, we're living gas. cheaper unless you've bought like 500 cases of toilet paper. <laughs> and then <laughs> <laughs> You might be rich selling it. Yeah. So, so I, we hope that these have st- uh, stirred some thoughts in you. Mm-hmm. And that you've, uh, we put some words maybe to some things that have been going on. I know there's a lot of single people out there. there, And it's hard to talk to someone deeply about what's going on. And and maybe we could fill that gap and have that conversation with you and let you peek into our lives. And, and maybe that would help you. Or in a, if you're in a relationship where there isn't much dialogue, mm. we just thought we'd just pause and say, hey, what's going on with you? What, what are you noticing? This is what I'm noticing. And and hopefully that would just connect with your heart and uh, create some awareness. Yeah. There's definitely going to be seasons in life where we we don't know uh, what to do. Uh, it's unexpected. It's a difficult season. But we hope that this uh, program just kind of helped you maybe see what does it look like to just take a moment to analyze what's going on, how you've responded, what you've learned, insights you've gained. Mm. Um, We definitely want to be here to help you through this season. So if you've got questions or you want to share some of your story, please reach out to us. Uh, Maybe even get into part of the conversation on our Twitter feed at Pure Sex Radio. Um, But you can reach out to us also on our website at puresexradio.com and just click on the contact link at the bottom of the page. We'd love to hear from you. Um, and and pray for you and help you through this season, whatever you're facing. But we're glad that you've been with us, and we look forward to seeing you back here again next time on the Pure Sex Radio program. God bless. Take care.